Hello, fourth graders. Today is Friday, April 17th. Um, and so I'm here to talk to you a little bit about your Check My Progress review um, in your math book. So you can find all of this information in your um, weekly schedules packet on Friday, April 17th in the math section where it says complete the Check My Progress page in your math book on pages 529 to 530 and bring your questions to Zoom on Tuesday. Remember, today is Friday, and there's no Zoom meetings on Fridays or Mondays. There are Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 9.30 to 10. So make sure that you get this done before Tuesday so that we can review together. So I am on page 529, and I'm going to go ahead and go over the vocabulary check with you, um, as well as a couple of the other problems on this page. Now, I'm going to give you some answers here, but if you would like to come in and do your own um, equivalent fractions, um, that would be a great idea. So write two equivalent fractions. So I know equivalent fractions are fractions that represent the same part of a whole. So I'm going to make up a fraction like two-thirds. Okay, so I can find a fraction that's equivalent to two-thirds by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So if I wanted to, I could say 2 thirds, and I could multiply by 2 to both the numerator and the denominator and get 4 sixths, which means 2 thirds and 4 sixths are equivalent fractions. Okay? Write the fraction that has, oh look at that, a 4 in the numerator and a 6 in the denominator. So a 4 in the numerator and a six in the denominator is four sixths. I didn't even plan that, how funny. Okay, <laughs> write the fraction from exercise two in simplest form. Okay, so if I wanted to do that, I'm gonna take four sixths and I'm gonna list all of its factors, one and four and two and two. For six, one and six, two and three, now I'm going to look for the greatest common factor, which is 2. And I'm going to take 4 6 and divide both the numerator and denominator by 2. And I get 2 thirds is 4 6 in simplest form. I promise I didn't even plan this. How funny. Okay. Number 4 says explain the difference between a greatest common factor and a least common multiple. So greatest common factor, I'm going to abbreviate GCF. And if I wasn't sure about this, a great place for me to check is in the back of my book. In these pages that have blue on the edge, this is my glossary. So I can go into my glossary and look, here's G, greatest common factor. The greatest common factor of two or more the greatest of the common factors of two or more numbers, okay? So I'm going to write that here. The greatest of the common numbers, common factors of, and I'm going to write two plus numbers. Oops, you couldn't see that, sorry. So I put the greatest of the common factors of two plus two or more numbers, okay? Least common multiple, or LCM for short. I'm gonna go to my glossary. Find L. And, how funny. It's not here. Well, that doesn't help me. So, the least common multiple is the smallest of the common multiples of two or more numbers, okay? 
So if you need to pause this video to copy that, you can now. Now moving into my concept check, I'm going to do one of these questions with you and then you're going to do the other ones on your own. But please make sure that you copy down the same ones that I do as well. So this says recognize whether the fractions are equivalent, right? Yes or no. And then use fraction tiles or number lines as too hard for you to do from home. You don't have those available to you. So you don't need to worry about that part. So they're asking me if one fourth and three twelfths are equivalent. The way that I'm going to find that out is I'm going to make sure that they have a common denominator. So I'm going to write one fourth because I know if I multiply four by three, I get 12, which means I'm going to have a common denominator. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So one fourth is equivalent to three twelfths. Look at that. So I'm going to write yes here. Okay. Number eight says generate two equivalent fractions for each fraction. Use fraction tiles or number lines. Again, you do not need to do this part. I just want to see you do the math. So my job is to generate two equivalent fractions for two eighths. Okay, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply two eighths. How about by two? So two eighths is equivalent to four sixteenths. Okay, and 2 eighths, if I multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3, it's also equivalent to 6 24ths. Okay, so there's my two equivalent fractions for 2 eighths. You need to do 1 third and 2 fourths. Don't forget, you need to have 2 for each. Okay, flipping it over. Now I'm on this page. Sorry about that. There you go. Okay. I'm going to do questions 11 and 13 with you, and then you're going to be responsible for 12 and 14. So 11 says, Adina read 60 out of 100 pages in a comic book. 60 out of 100, right? 60, 100. Write the fraction of pages she read in simplest form. Now, I know this one looks big, but thinking about numbers that end in zero, I know numbers that end in zero are divisible by two, but these, both of these numbers are also divisible by 10. So how could I start by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 10? So 60 divided by 10 is 6, and 100 divided by 10 is 10, but I'm pretty sure this isn't in simplest form just yet because I know 6 is divisible by 2 and 10 is also divisible by 2. So I think what I want to do now that it's pretty small is list the factors of both of these numbers and look for the greatest common factor. So the factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. The factors of 10 are 1 and 10. 2 and 5. Hmm. And I think that's it. So I'm going to circle my greatest common factor, which is 2. And now I'm going to take 6 tenths and divide it by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So 60 one hundredths in simplest form is 3 fifths. Okay, number 13. Number 13 says, write the fraction for the part that is shaded, then write an equivalent fraction. So looking at this fraction here, I have one, two, three, four possible parts. That's my denominator. And just one is shaded. So this fraction represents one fourth. An equivalent fraction I can find by multiplying this fraction by the same number on the numerator and the same number on the denominator. This time, instead of doing two like I have been, I can multiply by, how about by six? Why not? Okay, if I multiply by six, I get six twenty-fourths. So those two equivalent fractions are one-fourth and six twenty-fourths. Okay, 
Don't forget, you need to go back and do all of the questions on these pages that I didn't do um, and bring all of your questions to Zoom on Tuesday. I will see you at 9.30 on Tuesday.